Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com, and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show, and in this episode, I'm going to be covering another code snippet. So I'm going to be talking about how to insert form data into a MySQL database using PHP and MySQLi. I'm doing this because I, this is probably one of the most often asked questions I get, and it's a tutorial I have here on YouTube that is a little bit older, and people sometimes have trouble getting the data to actually insert into the database. And I get asked all the time what the issue is. So I'm, I want to actually make a video where I walk through this step by step and show you the hangups and where you can run into trouble when inserting form data into a database. So that's what I'll be covering for this episode. Be sure to stay tuned. All right, so to start this off, and actually before I do, if you are looking for the source code that I'm using here, I do make it available. I will cover how to get that at the end of this video. All right, so to start off, I created a very simple table here inside of my database. So I have the snippets database. I have a tab uh, table named user, and inside of it, I just have three columns, ID, name, and email. Now the ID is the primary key. It's set up to auto increment. So we actually won't ever insert any data into this one. It's uh, just to give us to number our rows essentially. Our name and email are the two that we're going to primarily be inserting data into and we'll cover how to do that. So that's the database structure. It's very, very simple uh, that you could set up in two seconds really. All right, so then over into our code, you can see down here, I've created a very, very simple form. And in that form, I have really two inputs. And the first one is to collect the name, which is right here. And the name of that input is name. And this one here is to collect the email and the name of that is email. And so then I have a bunch of PHP code up here that we'll go through. When I ins submit this form, then it will insert that data into uh, the database. Now, before I actually go through this code and show you that, the first thing that I wanna make clear is that there's there's two separate things. There's your form fields, which are these right here in your form that you create here, and then there's your database columns, which are these here. So those are two separate entities that you need to match up, essentially. And that's what you do inside of your PHP code. So you need to uh, take the data that's submitted in your form in your form fields and insert it into the columns inside of your database table. And again, you have to match those up. They're not automatically matched up. And that's the the really the problem that I see a lot of people running into is not quite sure how to match those things up. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do here. Now, to make this clear, again, I'll come over here to this page and I've set this to just print out our form data first. So if I enter my name and email, so name and email, and I submit this form, this is our post data. So this is our post array. And you can see it's an array and I have a key called name and a key called email, and then that points to the value of each, john and john at john.com. Right, so this is our form field data. This, this isn't anything from our database. The reason this is called, is labeled name, this key is name and this one's email, is because that's what I've set here in the actual input. Now if I change this to what's up for example <laughs> then that is going to change what happens here so if i come back here and uh, let's reload this page and i put in the exact same data and i submit this form now you can see the name of this element is what's up so this is always going to be whatever you put inside of your form the names that you give to your form okay so that's the first important point because when we get up here, we're going to start using that post data. And when I talk about post data, 
That's the data I'm talking about. I'm talking about the data that gets sent here in this array, okay? So then with that out of the way, what we do here, let's go ahead and remove this now that we've covered that. So uh, I wanna cover this briefly because I don't wanna get too caught up in the things that aren't related to directly to the problem. So uh, we check to see if the, the post data has even been submitted, if the form basically has even been submitted. So that's what this check is to start up here. Then we connect to MySQL. And so we're using MySQLi, which is what you should be using, MySQLi or PDO. And we create a new instance of the MySQLi class. And we pass in our host, our database username, our database pass uh, password, and our database name. So this is, again, one point where I think people get tripped up. They'll take some of the source code that I put online and they'll just use it verbatim. You have to change these values, okay? So for your database on your local server on your website, you have to change these to what they are for you. So you have to go and create your own database first. You have to have a user with a username and password and you put that in here. And then you have to have the name of the database that you created here. So this stuff, you, you all have to change. Localhost is about the only thing you really won't have to change. That, that usually stays the same on pretty much any website. Um, but the username, the password, and the database name, you have to change that stuff. So if you're having trouble, you're getting something related to username and password or can't connect, then it's probably related to this part right here. Because right down here, we do a check to see if we're connected to MySQL. And if we're not, we output an error. So this error is gonna tell you what's wrong up here. It'll tell you the password isn't right or the database doesn't exist and so forth. So you have to look at that error and then look up here and maybe there's a typo. Maybe uh, you haven't changed this or, or the password's wrong. You have to figure out what's going on up here. So that's the first thing where I see people have trouble connecting is just having this data up here incorrect and not even being able to connect to MySQL or MySQL in the first place. All right, then from there, we get into, this is where we have to match our form fields to our database columns. And that's exactly what this insert into uh, SQL statement is. So in this statement, we say insert into, which is MySQL command, then we give the name of our table. So if you remember, the name of my table was user. So we put the name of the table. Here is where we put our columns from our database. So the names, name of our columns in our database were name and email. So that's what we put here. This is the, this is the data or the columns we want to insert data into. It's the name column and the email column. Remember, we're ignoring the ID column because it's set to auto increment. It's gonna fill its own value. So we don't have to insert anything into it. So again, these are the database columns here. And again, these are in parentheses. Here, you notice it says values, and then we start parentheses again. These are the form fields. So you can see we have our post array right here. So this is this is the data that the form submitted to this, the, this script to be processed. And we have the name of our uh, form field here and the name of our other form field here. So this is where you're matching database column to form field. So you're saying insert the value from this form field into this database column. And these, I would call this matching process here dumb in the sense that whatever you put first here and whatever you've put first here, this will go into the first column here. This will go into this, whatever you put second here. So if I switch these, if I put this as email, then name, my SQL PHP, it's not gonna know to switch these values, and I leave these the same, it's not gonna know to switch them. It's not gonna know because this is set called name and this is called email, that it needs to switch them. It won't do that. It'll go ahead and insert the name into the email column and the email into the name column, and it'll be messed up. Okay, so it's whatever you have first over here, and whatever you have first over here, those two will go together. Whatever you have second over here and whatever you have second over here, those two will go together. 
So what that means is if you have different names for your database columns, you need to use different names here. If you give your form fields different names, you need to use different names over here. You need to make these match your form fields and you need to make these here match your database columns. And then you need to match these up in order so that the right form field data goes into the right column. That's, I think, probably the, the biggest piece where I see people having confusion and having trouble is, is understanding how to match all of this stuff up. So again, you have to, you have to be explicit with it because this, this is dumb. It's not going to know to switch things out. Okay. Then from there, we simply insert, we actually run our MySQLI query and we pass in our SQL statement to run it. And then we check if the insert was successful. And if it wasn't, then we go ahead and print out an er the error. So if you're getting, there's two places that you can get errors. You can get errors up here when you try to connect to MySQLi. And those will be things, again, related to unable to connect. And, and you'll see right here, it's, it'll say connect error, and then it'll have some sort of error. So you'll know it's something with the connection. Whereas down here, it's just going to say error. And these will be things around, check your syntax around this place or that place. And so now you know you're dealing with something along the lines of the SQL query piece right here. Okay, so again, that's how to make sure your, your, your data is actually getting submitted into uh, the form or into the database properly. If you have a situation where the form is processing, it's saying it's successful, but you go to your database and the fields are empty, then it's it's like likely that you have some sort of mismatch in your naming here. So you your you know your form fields and your database columns aren't matched up properly. That's what I see at least in the questions that I get most often is that those aren't matched up quite right. And so it's just inserting MySQLi isn't getting doesn't know what data it's supposed to submit. So it's just it's it's adding the row, but the, the, the columns are actually blank. All right, so hopefully that clears up uh, a little bit about how to actually get the, the form data, how it to submit into the actual database and get the values to hold. All right, so hopefully you get value from this episode. If you did, if you wouldn't mind sharing this with a person or group that you think would get value from it also, then I would greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so that you can get access to all of my future tutorials. Now, if you want to get access to this source code, then the way to do that is to head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources, or if you're on my website, you can simply click the resources tab right up here, and that will take you to my web developer resources page. Now, I have a whole all kinds of web developer resources on here from classes to the different tools that I use. But if you scroll down to the bottom here, then you'll see a section called code snippets. And you'll see PHP code snippets, WordPress code snippets, and Genesis code snippets. So you can go ahead and click on through to the code snippets that apply for the video you're watching, and you'll be able to get access to th that code snippet. Now, if we click here, for example, on PHP code snippets, then we will be taken to that page and you'll see all of the different code snippets here and you can click through and you'll get the video, you'll get the description and you'll get the code snippet as well. So again, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources, head on down to the code snippet section to get access to the snippet that you're after. Of course, while you're here, you might as well look around and see some of the other developer tools and courses that I have available here that are going to help you down your path of becoming a web developer. And since I'm constantly adding to this page, then you might as well bookmark this page and check back often so you can see all of the things that I've added and get access to all of the tools and snippets and courses and things that I'm using throughout my career. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.